Yehova Malak Olam Olamad Yehova Malak Yami Rakes The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nourishing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory, using the privacy of our priesthood in confession of our sins through rebound, Whenever we come to learn the word of the Lord our God, making sure that we cannot depend upon yesterday's experience, what we had yesterday, but having to renew day by day as we have been learning from the burnt wick on the lampstand. The burnt wick which they would cut and put it in the snuff box. Yesterday divine good is credited to yesterday's account. Today we need to take it afresh, once again a new thing. So depending upon today's new thing in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what Christ our Lord of our God has prepared and kept for us on today's date, by using the privacy of our priesthood, we shall come back and learn what Lord of our God has prepared through the prayer after rebound. Because 1 John 1 9 is not a license to sin, but it is a license to serve back Lord God the Father. Because Lord God the Father his spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in biblical truth and thus calling a mandate for us to be controlled of Lord God the Holy Spirit we have to be make sure that we have been believers if you aren't a believer the issue is not about fellowship with Lord God the Holy Spirit the issue is faith alone in Christ alone about your greatest question in your life your life cha challenging question and that life challenging question what it has to be have you believed in the Lord because after you die where you go if you are still an unbeliever knowing not as the scripture says for us no condemnation no judgment to them who are in Christ but those who haven't believed in the Lord they have already passed through the judgment because Lord God has already judged them he says in John 3 18 in the same way those who are in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ no condemnation to them he says in Romans 8 1 so be thankful to the Lord God because till date this unspeakable gift is available to us by simple act of faith alone in Christ alone, not by works lest any man should boast. So though you may think you can lose your salvation by XYZ deeds, it's not possible. But once when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, once saved, always saved. And you have to know this. You're going to lose your rewards, you're going to lose your works, but not your salvation. Because you cannot boast, you cannot stand and say in the energy of your flesh, I have done this, I will gain my salvation. No, salvation is a free gift, faith alone in Christ alone. That's what it is. Salvation is a free gift. You cannot have any other things. It is the way how Lord God has graciously bestowed to you. Your works will not count for salvation. If you may think your works will count for salvation, then you'll miss the boat. Therefore, we read in First Peter saying to the point, this salvation is not by gold and silver, but by the precious blood of Lamb on the cross. So you need to understand about these things. As the word of the Lord of God teaches to us every day, faith alone, right from the beginning, every day, faith alone in Christ alone. In every way of the mannerism from the Old Testament even till to the New Testament, it is by batak in the old, pistis in the new. It is nothing but faith alone, faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. And we need to wait upon the Lord of our God as we grow up gradually in the word of the Lord of our God. 
and realize how marvelous are his deeds. We are not coming to serve the Lord of a God out of compulsion or obligation or duty. We are coming to serve the Lord of a God with a free will, what he has designed for us. And that's what many people don't understand when we read in Exodus chapter 40, verses 33 and 34. Moses built in our obedience of command. Today everything is built. You are the living temple of Lord God. Your body is the temple of living Lord God. Your body itself is a Shekinah glory of Lord God. And thus you need to be aware. We have to be in the point of not just readily obeying to Lord God the Father, but completely giving up our lives in a complete isolation to the praise of His glory in His grace. <laughs> And we have an example for us in Jeremiah 44. The way the people of the past did not obey the word of truth, but rather they became recipients for what we can commonly call the wrath of the Lord. How they became recipients? The Lord God called them several times to learn the word of the Lord of our God, to obey the word of truth and perform the deeds of Bible doctrine. They did not do according to the will of God the Father, but rather they choose their own path. And that's what we need to learn today. So dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory. Using the privacy of your priesthood, let's come and learn the word of truth. Sanctify yourselves to look upon this great pile of wonders of the word of the Lord of our God that have been prepared and kept for us on today's date. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace in this day, O Lord, which you prepared and kept for us. Father, what else we can give, O Lord, except sin in our lives? That, O Lord, if you have remembered us that we are of dust, dealing with us in your loving kindness, you have provided for us this day. The day wherewith, in spirit and biblical truth, the confession of our sins, coming to learn the word of the Lord of our God, and knowing the truth and understanding. Father, every breath of our life on this earth is only for thy glory. Father, search us diligently, O Lord. See if there is an offense to us, Father. Cleanse us out. Because, Lord, nothing is more important for us on this earth than to do thy will. So, Father, committing everything into thy mighty hands, cleanse us, lead us according to the truth, and teach us the portion what you have prepared and kept for us on today's day to the praise of your glory. To this section, Father, we pray, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, could enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 44, starting with verse number 4, when we read, It certainly pricks our heart, as such, who have to be the true servants of the Lord of our God, the way they failed, because they did not love to expose to them what was abomination which Lord God hates, but rather they followed and practiced what they loved. Though the Lord God repeatedly commanded them in example of destroying the Amakalites, I remember what they did, he said. And we read two days back, in comparison to Satan in Luke chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, the way how Satan taunted my Christ. I have all the authority, bow down to me and I will give you these things. Yet Lord God knows very well how to take the glory of the world. And therefore he gives a great commission for us in Mark 16, 15, followed by Matthew 28 and in Acts 1, 8, which is very, very essential in comparison even with John 16, John 15, 27 and 16, 1. In Mark 16, 15, we read, preach the gospel. In Matthew 28, make disciples. In Acts 1, 8, witnesses. In John 15, 27, you are witnesses with me right from the beginning. And in John 16, 1, you shall not be hindered. Scandal leads are in these terms. And therefore, we need to learn that Lord God has given us this exousia authority to trample Satan under our feet and to do the will of God the Father in making disciples of all the nations. So Lord God knows in remembrance of that example of Amakalites teaching to us through King Saul, the first king, he failed. He destroyed that which was vile and refuse. He hearkened to the flesh, to the people. 
He did not hearken to the voice of Lord God. Today as well, though we have been cleansed with Lord's grace, chasad, though we have been given the right word of the Lord of God in truth and made a propitiatory shelter, yet we haven't departed from evil because we don't have truly the fear of Lord God. We don't have that. If we would have had that fear of Lord God, we would be the people to worship the Lord of our God in right biblical spirit and right biblical truth. Why I use the word right, which is upright in the sight of the Lord of our God? Because in Matthew chapter 7, we find a bunch of clocks where Lord God clearly states for us, you shall know them by their works. You can easily find them by their works, what they are. Whether they have been ravenous wolves, or whether they have been true shepherds of Bible doctrine in training you up to the flock of Christ. So here we find a very great lesson for us to distinguish who they are and why they are. In the same way he teaches to us. We have been kept over here on this earth to look what has been most needed for us. What is the things that have been given to us. And how our life has to be led in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we use the word right biblical spirit and right biblical truth because they are not following the word Yasher in the Hebrew, which is what Lord God demands according to his law, according to his word. And that's a great problem for us. Therefore, dear brethren, what is right in the sight of the Lord of our God, teaching to us in Jeremiah 44, 4, in comparison with Matthew 7, we read this passage in a overview, it teaches to us, number one, judge not that you shall be judged not, or not judged. And here it's a way which doesn't match to the subject over here, but it meant to say for the triple compound discipline, if anyone you may imagine and you may talk or real or whether it's an imagined sin against them, it will pay it back to you. With what measure you measure, the same measure will be paid back to you. And this triple compound discipline, number one, warning discipline. And number two, intensified stage of discipline. And number three, sin unto death. So here we find, when you have been repeatedly said, judge not, or crino the word, which meant to say to separate, Stating to the point, thinking that they're backbiting, they're doing this, they're doing that. When you talk about them, you know very well that you talk either real or imagined. If it is real, the punishment, what it has to get, Lord God will eliminate them. Because we have said not to gossip about others. That's the main problem with us. If it is imagined, the punishment, what if that man would have done in real, that sin would come upon you. And for that man, if it is not in if it is not real and it's imagined, he will get blessing. So the same compound will be paid back. So in verse number two he says, For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you measure, you shall be measured unto you. And he says, for example, why do you want to have a mort? That is nothing but a chaff in your things pertaining to your brother eyes. But consider what is a log of a beam in you. And here, dear brethren, this subject talks to us very specifically. First, cleanse out what is in your eyes, so that you shall not be called as a hypocrite. And in return, you shall come to understand when you have been cleansed, then you can cast out the moat from your brother's eye. By that we meant to say what? We have many things to learn. How we can simply judge, how we can go back and do that which is against the will of God the Father, thinking that we have all the power and authority. No. So furthermore, he says in verse number 6, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. And this is most important. In the present Christendom, they turn again, which is nothing but to turn around. And this turning around is nothing but for us, dear brethren, one's course of conduct, changing one's mind, how they can change. When they're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they change. When they're not in the fear of Lord God, the Father, to learn that for the pastor teacher, it's a bona fide gift. And the work of the pastor teacher is to train you up every day in the word of the Lord of a God. When they don't follow this instruction, certainly they will turn up. Therefore, you give them 
that which is holy, Hagios, they will be like dogs. They will be like the swine because they allow to trample it, to tread it down with insult and rudeness and they reject it. And who are the dogs? The dogs are the evil workers, the way how they mix the word of the Lord of a God with impure minds and they allow to do with the impure standards. Therefore the word dog. And when it comes to the swine, this is nothing but for us to understand, but like a hog. So here we need to understand that which is holy, give not unto the dogs, neither cast, that's what he says, to throw, to insert your pearls. That is what we need to look, a word of great value, before swine. And what they do? They trample them. They do not know the value of that. What they do? They just go on insulting by negligence. They reject, they trample, and they trample under their feet. So they trample them under their feet, which is nothing but poas. And this is what disciples listening to their teacher's instructions are said to be at his feet. But here they don't love to be at feet, but rather they would love to pull down the throne of the Lord. So he says they trample them under their feet and turn again because they are not having their conduct to be in one's mind. Therefore they change their mind and rend you the word regunimi, which is nothing but to break asunder, to tear in pieces. But if you are having the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, the flock would not rebel against you. They would be eager enough to learn the word of the Lord of a God. So, first, why do you want to make up to look in your brother's eye the mort? But rather, first, remove the beam which is in you. Haven't we had beams in our life? Every believer has, including I, the pastor teacher, we have our own beams. Day by day, what we need to do, cleanse it out in the power of the word of the Lord our God. Before teaching to you all the word, when we read the word, how much it applies to us? Are we really in accord with that? Are we need to change? We can find in my study notes, whenever I, I write a point over there, this verse today completely has changed my life. Because I have been failure in those terms, but now I have changed. And it is applying to me. Then I can come and preach to you. That's what the word is. It's not just talkers, it's to be walkers. If we are not walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and doing that what we teach, that's what he says even in Matthew 5. When he says the one who breaks even the least command and he teaches, he is called to be least. But the one who practices even the least command and he teaches, he shall be called the great. Though you may think it's a point of great and least in the kingdom of heaven, but it makes a lot of difference in the sight of the Lord of our God because we are having further the passage when he says, walk in the straight gate. That's why we have taken this Matthew 7 in comparison with Jeremiah 44 when he said to them, If they would have hearkened unto my voice, if they would have listened to my words, if they would have not done that wickedness, if they would have obeyed to me, if they would have been completely given in true love to Christ. That's what you know whenever you have a wife and husband, if your wife completely surrenders herself and gives to you her love, then you will have such kind of a great peace. But if you love to take from grudgingly, you cannot. That's what it would resemble the same terms. Christ our Lord of our God wants to give our life understanding Him what He has done for us. Realizing that it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me as Apostle Paul says. Realizing that our life itself is now a living exhibition for Christ. Not by force we have to give but we are giving him according to the will of God the Father that which is most needed for us. And what it is, it is not an obligation or binding duty, but rather through Lord God's free will love, your response to the standards of his love, to the response. That's what he demands for us, that we are now his servants. We want to be shutting the mouth of this foolish and ignorant man. And the response, what we give. And they need to learn. And yet what we are looking today, 
not walking in the straight gate because we don't want to love the Lord of our God in spirit because we don't want to love the Lord of our God according to his truth how can we make up our life to live as Christ to die is profitable how can we pray like the way the psalmist prays in Psalm 719 for us open up my eyes O Lord I shall look the pale wonders of the word Make me to look upon the stark exposition of the word of Lord like nakedness. I want to look back in the original like of Jesus, what it is. And we all are counting to be like hypocrites because we haven't been teaching them according to the standards of the original language of the scriptures. We all are having beam in our eyes. Rather far less we can love and go and correct the chaff in others one. We are having what beam in our eyes. Because we haven't come to look in the original language is what the word is. We are building upon vocabulary upon vocabulary which is no way concerned with the original language of the scriptures leading for wrong interpretations. And yet Lord God says, do not throw this holy one unto the dogs, the minds which have been impure. And do not throw your pearls, the precious one, before the swine, hogs. And who are these dogs and swines who are not in accord with the fear of the Lord God? These are the dogs and swines. They do not come over here to tremble before His presence in the Word and change as per the word of the Lord of our God demands. If they would tremble themselves, they would start straight the way exegesis. They would come every day to Bible class. They would come to look Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. They would come, though the outward man perishes, inward man to be renewed. They would be the people where Lord God says in the same Matthew 6, 34, Why do you worry? Fear not, but rather uphold yourself in the prayers continually your father in heaven knows before you could ask anything what to give to you therefore he teaches to us again and again uphold yourself in the prayers of Bible doctrine and enough is the evil sufficient is the kakia the wickedness of the people to break those things and they want to develop them their standards enough it is so why do you worry about that get back into the reality know the truth and he says in second corinthians 12 5 and 12 9 particularly my grace is sufficient for you the same again sufficient archeo he uses the same word in matthew 6 34 to teach enough is the evil you have for the day binding upon you but everything you do in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit you can do the will of God the Father when the evil is abiding day by day then how we can match our balance of account sheet if we are, waking, if we are giving our time to learn Bible doctrine weekly once and that to one hour weekly once one hour four weeks in a month four hours or five weeks in a month for five hours on a overall you have 52 to 53 weeks so you will find there 52 to 53 weeks how much Hardly 53 hours of doctrine you're going to learn. And for one year, if you're learning only 53 hours of doctrine, then you have 365 days. You need to compare that with 365 hours per day. How much you're lagging behind? And if you can go back and look in those terms, you're lagging behind six times the schedule given to you. And the six times the schedule what has been given to you when you're lagging behind then absolutely evil is greater than the knowledge of Bible doctrine, what you need to accumulate in you and operate in the power of the word of the Lord of our God in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Aren't we having beams in our eyes? Aren't we like those dogs and swines? Why Lord God would cast before us his pearls? Why would he give us this word? Why would he give us those precious teachings for us? He knows that we are dogs. He knows that we are swines. You are not coming one accord. And you come to once again build back and turn away to the Lord. And turn away from the Lord, not turn away into the Lord. Therefore he says, last day, trample number one. You don't know the importance of this word, what you are trampling today under your feet. You're not analyzing the word of the Lord of our God given to us in the church age. So what you're doing, you are 100% trampling it down under your feet. Aren't we trampling it under our feet? You know very well how much you're doing it. Besides trampling it out, you have come up even to turn again. First you trample, you turn again. That is what the word is, strafo. 
to change one's mind and what you do you rend regumini raso the word meant to say for us dear brethren to break to wreck and to do it into the fear and burst it out in your emotions and therefore he says for us ask seek knock the word ask atio in a lower rank to the superior one and the one to seek zatio in order to find why you seek not just to lose but to find that and the word to seek meant to say to demand to crave you're not just asking something wherewith you can say i will find it out no but the word meant to say to find you are asking and third one he says knock koruo which is nothing but knocking at the door so he says ask seek knock when you ask what does he say it shall be given didome to give something to someone when it has been granted and furnished and that's what the word meant to say to give grant or permit as per the word of the lord so the first thing he says you shall be given and that's what he says everyone who asketh it shall be given seeketh you shall be found it who risko that is what it meant to say for us to get knowledge and you shall find it and the word meant to say for us dear brethren to obtain to pursue and to look so the first thing you ask and it shall be given that is the word didomi to give someone something seek you shall find it after searching you shall know how it is and third he says knock it shall be opened and the word anagio which is nothing but to open in various applications again in the midst what is the word of the lord of a god says for us is to open up in the midst of this enemies where david says in psalms 23 before my enemies you are created for me my foot and then he says for us dear brethren every one that asketh receiveth again the word atio meant to say they shall have to take with hand that is lambano and the word over here in comparison to the previous ways he says for us here lambano and here he says it shall be given didomi and the word lambano it meant to say to take with hand that means you will realize it you will experience it for example you have asked the divine knowledge as solomon prayed to the lord god he experienced it he has taken it he has received it that's what lambano is all about first thing when he says it shall be given to you it is the word called as didomi and the word didomi meant to say for us dear brethren to give someone something and here he says when you ask he says you shall receive it that is lambano and furthermore to that he that seeketh zata or in order to find he shall find it herisco he will come to meet because he has discovered he has recognized he has detected and he has found that character or state wherewith he says to give knowledge and to know god so when he has been seeking you shall find and the one who is knocking at the door he says it shall be opened so here the two words are the same for example in verse number 7 he says for you to seek you shall find it is the same and to knock to open up it will be the same but only one thing from didomi to lambano and the word lambano meant to say to take in order to take wherewith he has given for you that which you are proven to be from the beginning and then furthermore what man is there of you who asks a son a bread will he give him a stone he's illustrating now what you ask what you seek and what you find or what you knock and if he ask a fish will he give him a serpent and if you then being evil that's our nature that's our character this is what we are it is by the grace of the lord of a god we are been saved it is by his grace he has counted us to be worthy to worship him if not the word of the lord of a god says what we are we are evil phonerias and this is the word which we need to learn dear brethren we are ill diseased right from the beginning that's what he says even in genesis 6 continually right from the youth what is the mind of this people it's evil he teaches to us the same thing over here again penned for us then you being evil this is a character of us and the word 
phonereas meant to say this is nothing but the attribute of satan so here we need to look dear brother and as pyrozodiathus writes a note on it because without exegesis we cannot go back because the word of the lord of a god demands exegesis so the strong code number for it is 4190 and the meaning of that is nothing but dear brethren which is severe labor and evil in a moral or spiritual sense we are always making a severe labor to know that we are having evil in a moral or in spiritual sense we are wicked we are mischievous we are malicious and therefore we need to know the word distinguished from kakos being evil in that is oneself but not necessarily malicious and satan is the author of all this mischief phonerias in the world and we are been in the world and lord god says as we read in psalm 119 in verse number 19 hide not o lord because i am a stranger on this earth he says and the word stranger is nothing but i am a foreigner i know not the word o lord i know not thy commandments i know not thy customs i know not what you have given to me to follow and on this earth he meant to say the soul eretes the inner man and there he says hide not o lord teach me thy commandments likewise we are here on this earth in this devil's world so here satan is called as the author of all mischief in the world and from where we derive the word he says poneria which is nothing but to do shrewd and its delight is in mischief and tragedy that's what satan is looking satan's delight is always to go back and consider itself in mischief and in tragedy so satan being the author of all mischief and here he says lord god you being evil phonereas 4190 and what is that we are evil and the word for us is nothing but absolutely moral or in spiritual sense we are evil and you being evil not paying to lord god your account you know to give good gifts to your son and daughter if they ask bread will he give stone if they ask fish will he give them snake then how much more you will be called as evil and it says being evil in your moral and spiritual sense you know aita that is what the word is how to give good gifts unto your children you being morally evil spiritually evil you know how to give good gifts to your children then how much more shall not the father in heaven give you good things agathas them that ask him ayata therefore all things whatsoever you would that man should do to you do you even so to them for this is the law and the prophets <laughs> what should men do to you being in peace live and let live principle trouble not that's what we love right so why can't you do to them to show forth your peace your love your true work in the lord and show forth to them what it is in the lord therefore we need to understand these things dear brother and very accurately if not it will be a very very much problematic for us but what we love to do for ourselves nothing but to look our lustful patterns to be fulfilled in greed in vain glory boasting of your life that's what you love to look isn't it but the word doesn't say so you have been secured you have been having eternal life love not the things of this world neither the things in the world you are a set apart for lord's glory and for lord's work so be aware be alert and do the will of God the Father to the highest. That's what he teaches to us. And therefore we need to be ready. We need to be alert. We need to look. How the standards of the truth will continue. So he says over here. Being evil you know to give good deeds. Or good things to your gift, gifts. Again the word <laughs> Doma. 
which is nothing but a gift. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. What they want to do for you, you do and show for them. Because this is the law and the prophets. And then he teaches to us. When you want to do good to others, first you should walk in the straight gate. And the straight gate, the words tenas, narrow, narrow. And that is what he says for us. The very close about straight gate. Enter into the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way. And the word wide is nothing but plotas. And this wide plotas we also use for the word broad, eurochoras, which is nothing but spacious, and again broad. It would come in the same way. And it says, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And the word meant to say broad, broad is the way that leadeth for what? To destruction, apageo. And Apollia, utter destruction, that's what it is, eternal misery for you. And many they be which go in, the word says, Theariat, through, and the word meant to say for us, Otas, themselves. And the word Theretia meant to say for us, they go themselves. Because it's evolution. That's what we were reading yesterday as well. Give to the Lord our God as you come and give in your evolution, your free will. Not grudgingly, not asking you to pay in the standards of obligation or duty. But the word for us is very specific. They which go in, the way which they want to lead for their own destruction, they go in the area through themselves. They come by their own volition. And furthermore, straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there will be that find it because they're already coming to seek, they're already coming to inquire, they're already coming to search, and thus they know very well to get the knowledge of Lord God. And now our passage will continue. Here we need to begin, but we thought we will take some exposition of these words and we took it. So first enter ice arkomai to go in and to have an entrance and the word meant to say to the straight gate the gate which is narrow and the word what we read from there you cause to go to that narrow road the same thing even we read in Luke many love to walk in that narrow gate but they cannot but here our Lord our God simply states for us for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. <laughs> wide and broad. Many few people will come for Bible doctrine. But many people will come for miracles, healings, oil and tongues. Why? That's the road of destruction. That's why they go there. And how they go? They go there for own selves. And the word of the Lord of God says in John 8.32, You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Knowing truth you are free. And continuing in the word of the Lord of God, then only you are my disciples. You don't want to look that. You don't want to look into these standards any longer. But what you look, you love to walk in the narrow gate. That's what you say and you think. Because we are speaking in tongues and the people who are coming there to teach you about these tongues, they are well equipped with those gimmicks and tricks. They blind your eyes not to know the word of the Lord of God because they themselves do not know the word of the Lord of God. And a blind leads another blind. Both of them will end up in ditch and they cannot understand that either. And Lord God has also given for you, for your own free will. You have your knees, have you ever bent before your knees to the Lord God? And ask your Lord God to guide you, to send you those shepherds who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. No. Because you are happy to go in a broad way, vast way. In a broad and a vast way is nothing but many people going there to learn. What? Nothing but their miracles, healings and tongues and signs and wonders. And that's what the present Christendom is all about. Therefore, he says, because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Narrow is the gate which leadeth unto true life. The word life is zoe. And copulative conjunction chi, few, oligas. Very certain it's not polygas, but oligas. They, they can find it, he says, very few. 
and why it comes to very few. Many are called fever chosen, that's why, isn't it? All are called fever chosen. To reign over the nations coming with Christ, those who have proved the caliber, they will come. Therefore, the word for us, whosoever, the word of the Lord our God hath given to you, whosoever shall come and do it, let them do it. In Revelation 2 and 3, you as in here, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. It's an open option for you if you can do this. <laughs> Among those seven churches in the historical trends, teaching to us what you have to be, where you have to be, how you ought to be. Therefore, the word for us, anyone is eligible because they have been given the same spirit, the same power. And they are eligible because Lord God cannot be partial. He is fair in giving, except the bona fide gift. But every believer has been given to carry his own cross and follow my Christ. That's the truth over there. And therefore he says, be aware. And this is what it is today. Be aware meant to say, moreover, be or bring near to turn your mind, attendant to be attentive for this false prophets, pseudo prophetes. The one who acting the part of a divinely inspired prophet utters falsehoods under the name of divine prophecies and is a pretended foreteller and that's what he is an imposter and what do they do the lying ones he teaches to us that he hasn't been moved by the spirit of the lord so be aware about these false prophets which come to you in shapes clothing but inward what is we call them within windside what they are they are nothing but Ravenous, rapacious, and the word harpax, which is nothing but for us, they are the robbers, extortioners, rapacious, and they seize by force, and they are ravenous. And how many words we find one equivalent for that to find as a robber? Aren't they robbing you? Your great divine wealth which has to be given to you at the moment when you are appearing at the Bhima throne of my Christ to introduce yourself and say this is my sheep what I have trained them up O Lord I have taught them the complete counsel of Bible doctrine O Lord since you haven't met the standards from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 you would be called as Rabinius Harpax the word in the Greek inwardly they are Harpax what a word it is. And this is what it is. Rabbinia's wolves. Cruel, greedy, destructive men. And we find in our present Christendom shining like bright, brilliant this cruel men in our pulpits. Why? Because they're robbing from you your divine wealth. They're robbing from you that which is right and perfect, which has, belongs to you. They come half in the sheep's clothing. Without the bona fide gift, they come. Without the burden of Lord God, they come. Therefore, we find in the same chapter of Matthew 7, Lord God spoke as the one who had authority. They cannot speak like the one who is having authority. They speak like the scribes. Therefore, the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher given to us at the moment of salvation demands preparation every day, every day, every day. And as we grow up in the original language of the scriptures, we know the burden for it. We cannot act like sheep's clothing, ravenous wolves in word. Because we will be robbers, what we can rob from you. We can rob to the most your spiritual wealth, your spiritual honor, that which belongs to you for every believer, what Lord God has made and kept. They are capable of walking in the will of God the Father, but you divert them by your miracles, healings, tongues and oil business. Therefore, that which is an abomination thing to the Lord God, which he hates, you're making them to practice in your pulpits. And that's a great pain for us. And that's what the present Christendom is running. They're not the servants of Lord God, they're ravenous wolves. Therefore, they cannot talk like the one who has authority, so that they can call Lord God as a witness for the words what they speak. They just pacify the subject. And if we are being given an account to look every day you are having evil, then how much more we need to be careful even to give to the Lord God that which is our account to Bible doctrine every day to cleanse it and to teach.
and yet the present pulpits haven't come for exegesis. They're answerable to the Lord God when they go back home. Not to me. Our duty is to once again give you a caution of warning whether they may allow to listen, forbear or reject. Whether they may allow to have three minutes or four minutes or ten minutes of information on them, let them have. And therefore Apostle Paul says, I haven't given them even one hour. Because we couldn't bear with them those they were false teachers. And we need to go back and teach in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every day. Morning one hour, evening one hour. That's the schedule. That's the schedule of the church. If you are in Christ, if you are making your salvation in Christ, if you are really fearful one in Christ, take up your cross, follow my Lord God, carry his word, become his disciple, grow up as grammatias, New Testament scribes or theologians. And in return for the commission laid down upon our shoulders, go back and make disciples of all the nations. And when we have been given such a great work, such a great burden, such a great privilege in serving and worshipping the true Lord of our God, if Lord God would call you, you are evil, phonerias, moral and spiritual sense you are evil, what you would do? And that's what in his sight we are. We are evil. You being evil know how to give good gifts to your sons and daughters. Don't you know to walk in the straight gate, the narrow gate? Don't walk in the broad gate which leadeth unto destruction. The word which is broad, broad, twice. And yet he says, be aware, be aware, looking into the standards. Moreover, you be aware, prosecco, to bring near about these false prophets which come to you in the form of sheep's clothing. But conjunction of contrast inwardly from within what it is, they are ravenous, are packs, robbers, extortioners, they're rapacious, ravenous. And the word meant to say for us, they seize by force. And they take it for their own self and choose by what? Because in the present Christendom, they want to choose by the standards what we call to elevate themselves a group of men and they want to call as a committee and the committee doesn't know what is the word of the Lord of a God though the word says for us in Deuteronomy 27 if there is anyone among elder for you first what he has to do write the word of the Lord of a God erect it upon the stones he says they're not by choice by this so they elect by an office and what they elect they elect to look what the standards these people they can be together happy these are ravenous wolves, and these will be ravenous wolves, wolves. First of all, the pastor is a robber, and the people who have been there as committee will support him as well, not to uphold the church, not to build the church, not to train them up in the word of the Lord, but to support their lustful patterns. They elect and they give to dictate terms. And they do not understand what is the burden of Bible doctrine because they just think the church has been started by our elders, we will be the elders, the church has been started by my father, so I will be an elder over here. The church is universal, it belongs to Christ. If he is the head, we have to be the body, and if he is the body, if he is the head, and we are his body, and if we are his body, then we need to obey what the head says, not what the body says to the head. It's for the mind to tell, though your body is there to work. It is the mind which says for you when to obey, when not to obey. And that's what we need to look. And the word of the Lord of God says for us to shine in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations as light luminaries. Have we done that? The word says we have been called in symbols of light and salt. Have we done that? But we haven't come to look upon these standards any longer, isn't it? Because we are just happy to look. That which could please our tingling ears, developing to us, itching ears, pastors. And that's what you need to learn. You need to consider. 
the Ichingia pastors what they are in our pulpit today to the core by this hapax hapax law. Wolves, wolves. And this is what they are today in our pulpits, many. They rob by elect of an office, they come and they can rob the divine glory of my Father in heaven, which has to be given to you as flock. And they inculcate in your mind to do this, to do this. If you don't do this, and if you don't do this, you will be out of the church. You will not be given membership. You will be not coming to our prayers because we will reject you not to attend the church. That's what they're interested to talk about. Because they're robbers. They do not know the word of the Lord of our God. In fact, indeed, they do not even understand what is the burden of my Christ in making a sinner to repent and come back to Christ and to become like Christ. And they put breaks saying to the point, we count you in the terms of money. If you give money, we are there for you. If you don't give money, we are not there with you. Aren't they robbers? Therefore, Lord God says for us what they are. Be aware about such false prophets. pseudo prophetias Who have the prejudiced mind to talk. And what do they do? They come to rob out. Rob, rob. These are robbers. And the choice by their own elect. They elect an office and they dictate the terms. Never they will obey what the word of the Lord of a God says. And do you know what the word says in verse number 16? This is what I wanted to take for you for Jeremiah 44. You shall know the word is epigenesco or epinosis knowledge. You shall be thoroughly acquainted to know, to know accurately what these people they are. And that's a great burden for us to teach. You have to know what these people they are, how to recognize them. Therefore, the word of the Lord of God teaches to us, you shall be acquainted, how? By their fruits. And the word meant to say, carpos, which is nothing but the fruit. And this is what he says, by their fruits. And he raises a question now, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Can you? If you are, then you are insane. If they don't have the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, better not to enter that place which belongs to them, where Lord God has given that bona fide gift only to male believers. And nothing else than that. Only to male believers in Christ. If not, Apostle Paul would have said, in First Timothy, long back to them, even women can preach. And you're standing in a place trying to gather grapes from thorns, figs from thistles. Is it possible for you? No way, dear brother, and you cannot. That's why the concept of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he says, you shall know. It's not oida, but he uses the word apinosis. What a pain it will be for us when we look. Therefore, in Jeremiah 44, 4, through verse number 9, he teaches to us the pain of his heart. That passage will teach for us why do you want to cut your own souls? Nepesh, your soul has to be in the word of the Lord of a God. Before, to make your soul to be in the word of the Lord of a God, you should be a believer. You have to become trichotomous from dichotomy. And this trichotomous, what he teaches to us again, your spirit should train up your soul. Therefore, he says in Psalm 119, in verse number 19, Hide not, O Lord, I am a stranger. What a word it is when we find that. It teaches to us, I am a stranger. And the word stranger is nothing but gare, a temporary inhabitant, wherewith I am coming on this earth like a pilgrimage one. So, I am a stranger in the earth. Your soul doesn't know Bible doctrine till you can believe in Christ and afterwards gradually grow up from the standards of milk to bread, from bread to meat. Therefore, these are the words what we find. 
You are a stranger in this land, therefore hide not, sater, conceal not. And he says for us to knock, to search, to seek. Because the word of the Lord of our God says for us, when you ask him, it is he who shall give it for you. And how you shall ask, how you shall find, how you shall knock, or how you shall search to find it. And you have a desire to learn the word of the Lord of our God every day. Isn't it? If you don't have that desire, what will happen? You're allowed to go and gather figs from thorns and grapes from thistles. That's what your life will be. Can you get? Can you get from them who don't have the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church and do these things? No, they will be just scribes, but not a man with authority to teach the word. Thus said the Lord, whether they may be hearers or forbears, thus said the Lord, whether you are allowed to take it, consider it, subscribe it and listen to it or not. Who cares? We are here to do, to blow the trumpet of the watchman, give you a caution of warring to destroy your enemy. Like the first enemy, what we look, Amakalites and Lord God says, I remember, even in the same way of Luke 4, when Christ, our Lord of our God, was being taunted by Satan, he still remembers. Thus he has given the church age this great privilege to become under his authority to enjoy in his dunamis, to enjoy in his standards of iskun power, to enjoy in his standards of kratos power, and to enjoy his standards to operate on the energy of the word of the Lord of our God and to make utter destruction the works of the devil. And if Lord God still counts you that you are evil, where do you will stand? And simply illustrates one simple example. Be aware about these false prophets. You shall know them by their works. And furthermore, he teaches to us, dear brethren, that you cannot find figs from thistles. And the word thistles is nothing but pricky wild plant. From there, can you get your figs? A fruit or fig tree? No. And can you get from thorns, akanta, brambles? And that's what we need to look when Gideon says, when I come back from the battle, I know what to do with thee. And he gets these brambles and he whips them off the elders. And then he says over here for us, can you get the things pertaining to the grapes with brambles? No, you cannot. Even so, like manna, in this way, that's what it is. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. And the word agathos gets always kalas, that which is handsome, excellent for you to be rewarded as genuine. The word kalos meant to say for us, dear brethren, which is genuine. So we need to be understanding these terms. So, which is praiseworthy, which is genuine, approved, precious, and that which has been acceptable in the sight of the Lord our God. That's what Agathos gets good, the good of great intrinsic value, such a good thing. But a corrupt tree, sapros, rotten, putrefied, corrupted by one and no longer fit for use. <laughs> Are you sapros, cross check? And the word sapros also meant to say for us, which is of a poor quality, unfit for use, it is worthless. And this sapros, he says, they get again for us. And therefore, in the sight of the Lord our God, we are the corrupt tree like. Therefore, to make yourself once again to be available to the work of the Lord our God, using the privacy of your priesthood, get back to do the will of God the Father. Therefore, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down, ek poto, to cut it off and cast, that is what they thrown into the fire. Therefore, dear brethren, by their fruits you shall know them, whether they are really genuine, whether they are really profitable to you, you shall know them. And from verse number 21 we shall continue tomorrow, since I have a sermon to preach. And yet, we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us. But remember there, we have good and evil. The one corrupt 
Sapros is Ponorias, but the one who's Agathos is always producing Kalos. Agathos produces Kalos, Sapros produces evil, that is nothing but Ponorias. Thus, if you are Agathos, prove your work, and we shall know them by their works, says the word. So, dear brethren, think over these issues, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us to the praise of his glory, day by day. Because we are giving to Lord God nothing but corrupt. We are giving to Lord God nothing but evil, except it is by the grace of the Lord our God, to get every day morning our joy, because though we weep all night, saying to the point, as he says in Psalms, I wept along all night sowing, but morning cometh the joy of deliverance. In the same way, we don't deserve to live, yet it is the grace of the Lord our God to provide us this burden and his work. And being thankful to him, why can't we produce that which is good, agathos and kalos, rather than producing sapros and phonorias? Think about these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head and eyes closed, the closing moments dedicated, being here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, in order of returning to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, that's the moment itself, you shall have the eternal truth. The eternal truth is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. As for the believer, the greatest matter to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor, teacher, the greatest matter to carry Sotan Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the Dharma from my witnesses, for they have been called. The number one Dharma from my witnesses, in will Trinity, follow the Bible in our hands, and number two Dharma from my witnesses, or hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinity Divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to learn the word a lot today. Help us, Father, as Jeremiah 44, 4 through 9 taught for us a very great pill, great painful passage of yours used in Anthropo. Pathism, to understand what a great pain you are being on behalf of us. Yet, O Lord, we come in this world enjoying our lustful patterns, though in spite being warned several times. Yet, O Lord, it is thy grace, O Lord, to save us. Father, in thy vicinity, O Lord, if it is in thy grace, O Lord, make our path straight according to thy will, so that, Sovereign Lord, we shall not be blamed. And in return, the work of you is to be continued on this earth in great truth, hands, and holiness. Such as diligently, Father. And see if there's an offense within us, lead us in the way of everlasting truth, not just to look in our fellow men's eye, the chaff, but rather to remove first beam in our own eyes. So that Sovereign Lord, as the word says, that we are constantly evil, yet you have come for us to save us from this evil and to do that which is right and perfect in the sight. Such as diligently, Father, and see if there's an offense within us, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, precious name we pray, Father. The Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and challenge us by this message. Amen.